The following program is intended for mature audiences. Flesh Wound After Dark, live with Flesh Wound Dan and producer Todd Loya. Todd! How goes it? Well, it was going fine. I was hoping you forgot about that. Of course I didn't forget about it. It's Flesh Wound After Dark. You have to do the sexy voice. Well, maybe one day you'll get it down. I've got it down perfect, sir. Audible is calling me to narrate all sorts of like erotic fan fiction. You, you, you know, you're lucky I, I'm supposed to be good now with certain comments. Otherwise, insert those comments here. Bigfoot erotica. It's a big thing, Dad. Big thing. And I'm going to be doing a lot of it's, uh, that. It's, uh, what is it? Ero- Cryptid erotica. Yeah, oh, I'll see. Yeah. I was yeah. going the other way. Get like Mothman. I don't know how Mothman smashes, but uh, see, I thought it was yeah. erotic cryptos. Oh, fuck, I can't say it now. Cryptozoology, Jesus. Now, well, you're getting into like real animals. That's disgusting. We're talking no Bigfoot. cryptozoology. Oh, okay. Yes, Bigfoot and Mothman. Bigfoot is real. So, but that's a whole other thing. I still swear I saw him when I was a, a youngster. But well, we'll I'll talk- tell you what you saw. You saw a black bear, and it was dark, standing up. You know. It was daytime, and it wasn't a black bear. It was the wrong color. Oh. Was it ripping a biker's uh, dick off? It was, actually. No. We'll talk about that whenever we do our next big Black thing. bears don't really do that. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's coming up soon, uh, our, our cryptid erotica special. Well, maybe but... we'll do it after dark when we have Bigfoot's Wild Weekend and a few other ones. Bigfoot or Bust, the upcoming Jim Wynorski film. I There's another. All right. Well, yeah. I guess we just booked our next, uh, our upcoming After Dark show. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, and there's uh, Sex Squatch. Sex Squatch and Sex Squatch 2 Return yeah. to Bloodstool Lake, I believe it was. Something like that. Yeah. So good, good times. But uh, so, anyways. Before we get into our movie tonight, I'm just going to say it made an impression. I will not give that away yet, but it made such a saw a strong impression that I knew we had to review this one immediately. So, I don't know what Todd thought, but uh, I knew that this had to be covered immediately. And that is director Dustin Wade Mills. Slaughterhouse Slumber Party. Uh, So, in this film, what started out as the debauched annual slumber party for a tight-knit group of gal pals becomes a fight for their lives when supernatural evil evil threatens to destroy the world and, even worse, ruin the one night of the year the ladies get to have a nude pillow fight. Trapped by magic, surrounded by evil, and very underdressed, will they survive the night, or will this slumber party become a slaughterhouse? All right, so. Dan, I'm just guessing you hated it from your intro. No, no, I fucking loved it. Oh my god, did I fucking love this one, Todd. Um, So, this is definitely for the, the fans of the golden era of late night scream queen entertainment uh sorority babes in the slime ball bowl arama nightmare sisters yes evil tunes evil tunes absolute absolute fucking lootly right (laughs) Uh, and also raunched up definitely more raunchy uh there's some things you didn't see uh you know uh brink stevens or linnea quigley do (laughs) Uh, I feel it was like a com a, a combo of that and say uh, death court service. It was like you you mashed yeah. them all up and this is what you got. Very very raunchy. Uh, I'm going to be putting over a whole lot of stuff on this one, but um, like we open up with these trailers for uh, <laughs> for uh, I want to say the name right. Rocket Von Ribcage played by Ariel Nicole Jarko and. 
just hilarious. A trailer for Attack of the Ku Klux Kaiju, um, <laughs> which you're getting like full on nudity right from the beginning. So there's there's no doubt what kind of movie you're about to enter into. Uh, lines like, uh, I knew this movie was speaking to me, Todd. Um, so from that point on, I knew I was in for a good time. Uh, again, obviously more raunchy. I was also going to throw trauma in there to a degree, but if you if you're familiar with the deaf deaf scored service films, that'll also give you an idea of uh, kind of an idea of tone. Uh, although, to be honest, I think the acting is better here. Uh, in fact, pretty much everybody had great comedic chops in this. I don't know that everybody is necessarily a, a season thespian but they they did comedy damn well and uh Janya lupa is gretchen kind of the demonic girl that you know there's something wrong with her aaron r ryan who's a familiar face from the uh henry k cueto films that we've reviewed in the past uh among many others um obviously this is filled with wall-to-wall -wall nudity but don't mistake this as just like a softcore porn. It's not. It's actually a hilarious comedy. I I laughed my ass off. Um, the, the, the line uh, where she pulls out one tit, I'm only one titty drunk. I got to work on the other one. <laughs> uh, just lines like that. The world needs movies like this. It really does. You don't get this very often. Uh, a film that isn't afraid to really go for it in terms of the humor. Uh, but there's nothing mean-spirited here. This is not like a, anything that, you know, other unless you're offended by full and frequent nudity. I, I don't think you'll have any issue. Lots of toilet humor. Lots of very pretty girls doing some uh, pretty <laughs> disgusting things. Uh, but Todd, I can't get over how much I did love this one. Uh, obviously, you see, I'm like, you know, an A24 or elevated horror guy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, believe me, I like a lot of different things. And I fucking loved this. It might be... If I were to just classify it as a comedy, it might be my favorite comedy I've seen this year. Um, and also, lots of the effects work. Uh, obviously, you know, computer generated effects. I, I, some people may have issues with that, but I think it's very creative. And if you're familiar with Dustin Mills' work in the past, I kind of prefer like some of the stuff he does versus some of the stuff we see in, in certain sci-fi channel originals. Um, I, I think it's everything about this movie was just so creative. And if I recall, I think he, he shoots like some stuff like just in his apartment. Um, I, I think he's, I, I think Dustin Mills is actually one of the better uh, indie filmmakers out there in our genre. Uh, certainly better than another Dustin, but we won't get into that. Um, you just don't get it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I definitely don't. But Dustin Mills gets it. Um, so, yeah, and it, every girl in this, there's not really a throwaway girl. They, they all are interesting characters. They have their own specific personalities. Yeah. I, I actually, some people might watch this and think, yeah, what the hell is Dan talking about? I think this is a great film, and I stand by it. Uh, how about you, Todd? Did this one hit for you? What do you, I mean, you really have to ask me. You know I love this one, too. <laughs> I, I figured. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those cases going in, because it has beautiful cover art, two, all, two posters that are both great. Mm. So it's one of those I'm like... Mm. Well, oh, we I don't know which cover for, you got. Check for boobs. They're animated anyways, but I don't think they show any boobs there. But yeah. No, they don't of. show boobs. That's 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 literally yeah. our graphic for the show, Dan. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I was making sure that there well, was. Well, no, there's another here. one that's a little more seductive. Yeah. Um, but with that, I mean, put it up again, Dan. Yeah, I can't definitely can't show the insert, but yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of times you get a cool cover like that, and then the movie will be a turd. 
this one i, I oh, yeah. and that's what i was worried about like they they put all their money towards the cover and inside was a turd well that's a theme with with a lot of indie movies oh no it is yeah fantastic art and then it's like oh fuck so I didn't get too excited about when I saw it, but I was like, okay, I'm interested. I'm interested in the plot and fucking, yeah, I fucking loved it. It was blast from beginning to end. Um, you, you already mentioned that the women, they all had something to do. The, the potty humor was, I was fucking <laughs> laughing my ass off, farting on bitches and shit. So. <laughs> there, there, there was a lot. And nope. I mean, toilet humor is, a you know, it just depends. It's not inherently funny. But the gags here were hilarious. Um, I knew <laughs> that one. <laughs> or the demon. I bet you wish <laughs> that was another good. Just from beginning to end, this just this movie just makes life better. <laughs> like it just brings you back to a, a simpler time. Um, I wish we had more films out there like this honestly uh, yeah I, I hope we get some more uh from dustin yeah he uh he's he's pretty prolific uh skinless is another one he did um bath salt he, zombies <clears throat> yeah yeah he, he's he's been going at it for a while uh and he should be you should check him out now this is by no means uh the tone of all of his movies he definitely does different things and you know for a guy who i think certainly is not working with any kind of a significant budget uh i i've enjoyed a lot of what i've seen there, there's i have a lot of uh gaps though too honestly like looking at his uh, filmography there's a few yeah. there that i haven't checked out yet so uh he has so, yeah. a lot of shorts too yeah you should definitely dive into his uh Filmography. It's actually funny Aaron R. Ryan was in this because uh, Henrique Cueto, uh, another, another you know, very small micro-budget indie guy who I think does a lot of good work. And yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, if, if you're offended by nudity or, uh, but again, this is not really. This is Dan's trigger warning. <laughs> no no it, it this is not really something though that i think is like mean-spirited in any kind no. of way um it's all just good time funny you can tell that the actors had a blast making this um in fact if you do get the blu-ray which right now you can get on ebay at the moment i'm assuming it's from the studio or the filmmaker himself but you type it in you can buy it on ebay um and it's also on dvd i believe too if you prefer that um but it the on the blu-ray there is an extended pillow fight so dan's yeah. already used it about four times <laughs> oh, six seven but who's counting um yeah I just, I just really like this. And I should also put over for you indie horror fans, Marcus Koch does some of the effects work and makeup on this. Uh, also a great filmmaker himself. Uh, man, Todd, I just love this one. Yeah. This is, this is Watching it, I knew we were both going to have the same opinion on this one. Yeah. It was just one of those like where it's like, yeah. If they didn't like this, I'd be like, I'd be, I wouldn't know what to say. Technically, this is listed as a 2019 film. Now, I'm not sure when it officially dropped, but this could actually crack my top 10. I'm I'm with you 100%. I, I might have to put it in there for representation for something different because... I was thinking that yeah. when we were talking about this. <laughs> that was the only thing, the year. But I think it may be a case 2019 was when it was done. Then, yeah. Yeah, you're I, getting into that clusterfuck time yeah. so who so. knows um but man uh the, the girl naming her uh vagina vagifa christy that <laughs> just it's very clever very well written and uh yeah i just had i had a blast i want to watch it again and i always say that's a great measuring stick because 
we review a lot of movies plus what we watch on our own time. So I don't get to rewatch stuff very often because there's always, okay, got to get this in, got to get that in. This I will make time for again, certainly by Halloween. If I have, it's a great party flick. Um, get, get a, get a bunch of guys together or girls that, you know, have this kind of raunchy sense of humor and you will just have a great time. Um, Man, I know I've sucked this one off thoroughly, but it really does deserve it. And I am I, I'm familiar with some of the actresses here, but I'm going to try and follow them all, keep an eye on some of the ones I'm less familiar with because I'd like more in this world, quite honestly. I hope Dustin's maybe considering a follow-up or a sequel of, of some kind because more of this, more of this. We, we need films like this out in the world yeah i'm pretty sure i just looked up uh it, i'm pretty sure it's it's dustin selling them directly because the only thing they're selling is skinless on blu-ray yeah. and slaughter slaughterhouse slumber party on blu-ray and dvd blu-rays yeah. 20 dvds 10 good price go grab it. i think it's like three bucks shipping so yeah it's not it's not bad at all and i again and they, it is a bdr but yeah. and I looked up on Blu-ray.com and it's listing the release date of the, of the disc as October August 6, twenty nineteen. So, okay, and you know what though that you can also remote. kind of debate that too if it's self distributed. You know, somebody would be insane not to grab this. Yeah, to be My, honest, to get it. On, I'm not going to say on. somebody because this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But if you like the movies we named and stuff. You're going to love this. And it is a throwback yeah. to, we don't get a lot of stuff like this anymore. No, we don't. Not, not certainly not good stuff like this. It just seems like we're looking at that other Dustin. How many, <laughs> how many true, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, how many truly funny, funny movies do we get? Really? you get some like indie, like dark comedy, more serious stuff that certainly we enjoy. But you don't get a whole lot of this. Like, I, my mm. sides hurt after watching this. And his they, wrist. And my wrist. That's <laughs> it's you don't see it right now because it's like I think I fractured it. You got the no. you got the 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 Bob Orton gimmick going. The cast. I'm gonna <laughs> I've got the Bob Orton gimmick, uh, you know, on the arm and below too. Uh, <laughs> you got double casts. <laughs> double double casts, man. Mm. Um yeah. Uh but yeah, guys, seriously, check it out and watch the trailer. If you're if you were looking at the trailer and you're like, nope, uh, then obviously you know this one. If the trailer's intriguing, I think it's going to be a winner for you. Again, I don't want to give the impression. I mean, we are doing this on Flesh Wound After Dark. I, I would not call this a soft core porn movie. I really wouldn't. I w but you know, After Dark, it's it's one. It's definitely not like a a family. You know, After no. Dark doesn't just mean soft core, but I mean with the amount of nudity. Yeah, there's a ton, so it qualified. Uh, again, it's they're they're naked uh, more than half of the movie. I was gonna so. say about eighty percent. Eighty percent. Right, we got a comment, right. Dan. You want to read that? Uh, Jess at Cable Channel Eleven. I always go back to the first two Slumber Party massacres and Sorority House massacres. I've just never watched anything like them since that that since they have made the same impact um yeah actually the first sorority house massacre is not very good but the second one <laughs> and hard to die if you're a hard to die fan that's a masterpiece also something to double this with i um, would i would bust one of shout factory announces one of their you know here they are on the website tiles and it's that one I'd say that's probably fairly likely. I, I know that one was finished on video, so they have work to do if they're going to do it. So since yeah. they own that catalog, I'm sure, you know, it'll You'd happen be eventually. So, you would be shocked how often Hard to Die comes up. It, uh, it does. It's one that people ask for a lot. That um, and Psycho Cop 2 are a beautiful double feature. And hopefully yeah. one day we'll be able to do that in high definition. We're halfway there. Yeah, and hey, look, this is the type of thing, if you're working on a like a micro budget, 
go for something like this because this is truly something that you're you're not going to get if you've got a, a hundred thousand dollar budget or uh, or certainly anything higher than that you're not going to make this kind of movie and that's sad so i think it's up to guys like a uh, uh, dustin and uh, dustin uh mills and not a, the other one <laughs> not, definitely not the other dustin the other dustin fucking sucks uh, okay uh so yeah guys I can't suck this one off anymore. It is awesome. Check it out. Laugh. Have a good time. Um, so I always have to remind people, we rate based on what it is. I'm not comparing Slaughterhouse Slumber Party to The Exorcist or, you know, any anything like that or Evil Dead or anything like that. I'm, I'm, review, I'm covering it for what it is. And for what it is... This is perfect to me, and I'm a five. It it has a little bit of Evil Dead in it too. You brought it. You said it. Yeah. But... Night of the Demons. It's also yeah. kind of got that vibe. Again, a lot of nakedness. I don't yeah. want you know N- naked Night of the Demons know. in your 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 little. Um. Yeah. Ah. Oh, shit. See, I was going back and forth for the same reason, but I've been going off my enjoyment of a movie for my rating. Yeah. So I'm a five also. Mm. You know, it's really, I figured I, I was just like, I'm not, I, there, I have nothing to criticize, so I'm just going to do it. But you know who, who I really want to watch this is, is uh, Chris. Oh, man. <laughs> I hope he just does since you did a night of the demons comparison. Uh, although watch him surprise us and like it. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Good night. Good evening. Oh, Jesus Christ.